All right, welcome back. We'll continue our workshop here. Next thing we'll talk about is font spacing. I think we're on page 11 if you want to follow along. Um, again, font spacing, I always say to home is your friend because the spacing is pretty standard, it's pretty normal. Again, Pal uh, Palatino, Verdana, Arial, Helvetica, they're all pretty standard as well. You do not want something like this. Impact. It's just pretty hard to read overall, especially if you had to read a lot of it. It gets a little tiresome on the eyes. There's some other weird ones like KT, I guess is how you pronounce it. It kind of spreads them out and it's just a little bit odd. There's tons more. You've seen them all. There's script, there's other cursive writing and things like that. And then the other thing is use straight text. You, if you're going to use embellishments like italics, you use it for emphasis, but use it sparingly. This is what the research shows. Bold, same thing. You probably don't want to have bold all the time. But if it's something really important, you can use it sparingly and it would bring out a certain point. And you want to look up for this one. You want to avoid this, Beth. It works. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Animations and flash, especially when PowerPoint first edited these in years ago, they were all the rage. And you know, you can imagine this kind of thing. Oh, this is fun. It's like a commercial, but. Just kind of distracting. If you did this over and over and over, it's you know here it's okay for a little while, but, you know, a little commercial break here. Um, it's fun occasionally, but if you did it every slide, it would be really tiresome. The side effect, the side effects, the slide effects where you um, one slide comes in and another slide goes out. You know the the entrance and the exit yeah. of the slides. Um, what do you think about those? I'm not a fan of them. I'd have to see it. I think for, if you're like simulating a slideshow, for example, like an old school slideshow, you might do one to show pictures that way, just to kind of, or I've been reading about this on LinkedIn. There's a bunch of groups on LinkedIn about PowerPoint, actually. And they talk about using it as a signature, like my gray slide is kind of a signature now. You know what the gray slide means? Mm -hmm. You might use it for a signature to transition from a certain chapter to a new chapter. Okay. Like you could use it for something like that. or to see, there may be a way to use it, but it can get tiresome if you use it all the time. Like if I did that spinning thing every time, you would just go, you know. Well, I, one of my colleagues at the other agency, he used almost every kind of entrance and exit. Oh, for, throughout. Throughout, so it was, it was not consistent. So he gave, I think I told you this, he gave me an opportunity to work on the slide, so I just followed that out. Yeah. <laughs> and so. It's almost like, and one analogy is like um, subtitles on a French film or a foreign film. After a while, you forget they're even there. You just kind of go with the film. If you use a consistent slide transition throughout the whole slides, it wouldn't be a big deal. People get used to that one transition you're using, it. even if it was, you know, flutter or checkerboard or whatever. It, it's a little annoying at first, but I think you get used to it. But if you're using all random different ones, that can really it's kind of neat occasionally for a kid's thing maybe, but I, I don't like it. I'm all about consistency. I mean, here, here's an example where I did a flyer basically, I just cut and pasted it up here. So I used some different fonts and things, but generally it's all the same font. And a little dual use of the blue color, sort of my signature color, <laughs> my blue shirt. You see that all over my Facebook page. And again, sort of highlighting it with the, you know, the proceeds angle on this thing. But all right, next thing we'll do is talk about color. And I actually was able to print these out years in color there. You'll see on, um, is that right? Yeah, color. Did I skip something? No, I'll get to it in a minute. Okay, it's fine. Second guessing myself. Okay. So with color, you want to think about contrasting. This is specifically for font right now. You want to have a high contrast combination. So 
you know, the simplest is um, dark contrast, like black on white. It's most, it's not really a color, obviously. We know black and white are not really colors, but for maximum contrast, it's the best combination for readability and for getting your point across for text specifically. Now, here's a model of a slide that you might have. You have the 32 point font on top, you might have 28 and 24 as your sort of secondary bullet sizes, and then again, your black uh, letter on white background. This is modeled after the paper they did in there. Now, there's other combinations besides just black on white. You can do white on black, you can do black on gray. The contrast is not quite as good. Uh, white on black, you could use, if you knew you were going to be in a theater style room with no lighting, it would work pretty well. But we rarely are in that situation. So the white and black generally works better. Um, the problem with the black, especially in this case, would be, you know, if you had light on that from the stage, it would bleach it out somewhat. And again, you can see the black and gray, it's just not a good contrast. It, it's, it's reasonable, but it's not as good as the white and black. Or black and white, I mean. So here's just an example of what gray could look like. It's not bad, especially when it's nice, big, clear font. Pretty well, pretty easy to read. Again, we have Tahoma. It's a little bit, they say the white is about 15%. This is 15% darker than the white would be. So uh, this is not quite as high contrast, but it's, it's not bad. But, but you said the um, title should be in 44 point, and the bullets in 32 point. It should be a minimum of 32. That's what they say. I use 44 because it's bigger. Um, but the point points for the main bullets, if they, he recommend the 32 point I think it's because in my case, there's certain headings that didn't fit well, so I wanted to be consistent, so I went ahead and compromised a little bit and used 32. Oh. Yeah. If I recall, that's what I did. 44 is ideal if you can fit it in. But in my case, they decided to compromise a little bit. And 16, he says, is the minimum for you know legends and tables and things. But I think it's pretty small. So a little more from the article itself. Here's an example, like literally cut and paste from the article. And we'll get into this. You'll see this again later. But this is a case, again, where the gray is not bad. And then with the color, it makes the color pop pretty well. So the blue and the green, you can see it pretty, pretty, pretty well. You know, you wouldn't want to do a... You know, dark gray on gray wouldn't work very well. And even a white on gray wouldn't work so well. But we'll, we'll see this again, but I just want to show you a quick example. Complementary colors can also be used with other colors, such as yellow and blue. And that's a pretty good contrast overall, especially the blue and yellow. You could do other combinations, but this is just one that they talk about in the paper. Um, here's an example from the article. And again, you'll see this again. It's a little bit bleached out, but it's not bad. In the blue and pink pop pretty well in the yellow, and you can see it from distance. You can tell there's obviously two different um, series here, you know, so it's pretty clear. And we'll talk about texture again but in a minute, but the texture kind of gives it a second level of, of complexity well, makes it pop, especially when this becomes a gray, so it's on a slide later on. All right. So here's a, our, this is just kind of replicated from the article. Again, it's sort of a model. This, in this case, we used Arial 32 point font. And again, you're right, we could make a little bigger, but I think it's still, in this case, especially with a relatively small room, it's pretty readable. Now, there's one that you want to avoid, and I'm sure you've probably all seen this one, but it's just atrocious. The green on red, or red on green, you can read it okay, but it does some funky things. It looks like it's floating. Um, there's one that you really, another reason to avoid it is because it just looks terrible. Um, Pitchman is someone I can talk about later, but he just does not like it at all. And there's five to eight, five to eight percent of mostly males who can't even tell there's a five in there. Can you, can you all see it? My brother could not, he's colorblind literally. So the five, obviously we can see it pretty well, but it would not be in gray, but this is basically how it would look to so someone who's colorblind. So that's another reason that the green and red in particular is just a bad combo. You can see again there, it's pretty subtle. All right, we'll go into another guideline, and this is about layout. Uh, now, are layout. you saying that the yellow and blue is okay for it's, 
far as I know, it's very rare for someone to be yellow who colorblind. Red green is the most common. Yeah, and then you can probably Google that and find out. But I think it's five to eight percent of, of males, particularly, are red green colorblind. But females are very, very infrequent. Mm -hmm. Females be colorblind at all. Yeah, I think it's, it's very common. And then if you Google it, you'll find there's you know very rarely one out of a million people are actually they see things with no color. You know, but that's very rare. Probably more, probably less than that actually, one in a million or something. All right. Any more questions about that? Here we go. All right, layout, and we've alluded to this already. We've got to ask some questions about it. You really want to be consistent in your titles, consistent on where you put things. You see, I've been pretty good so far. You know, always putting the heading in the same place, and it's a little boring, but it's predictable. At least someone, someone knows where to look. Now, there are times when you can mix it up, but this is what the article talks about. Um, they also recommend leaving a margin around the slide. I've, I've been pretty good myself. Lots of reasons. You can see even right here. We got lucky and I didn't cut it off, but you could, you've probably been in a presentation where it gets cut off. So if you give yourself a little buffer, at least you've got something to play with if there is an issue. Or if you do punch something all the way to the edge, make sure it's not vital. Some of mine you probably have seen, I think I cut it out, but I used to have a little copyright thing here and I just took it out 